Educating Nurses on Caring for Patients with Bipolar Disorder. The objective of this presentation is to provide nurses with the tools necessary to interact with patients suffering from bipolar disorder through the use of technology to provide the education. Through the use of internet and social media platforms, nurses can provide education and knowledge to other nurses as well as learn new information. Through this YouTube video, nurses will be able to gain more understanding in the care and management of patients who have bipolar disorder. The use of social media now permeates in the workplace, schools, colleges, and universities. Social media comprises activities that involve socializing and networking online through words, pictures, and videos. Social media creates new opportunities to communicate with people. The key purpose is engagement of others through electronic means, most often supported through internet sites or software. Social networking is one aspect of social media where individuals are in communities that can share ideas, interests, or are looking to meet people with similar ideas and interests. According to Pew Research Center, roughly 80% of Americans currently use the internet, and between 70 to 80% of these users seek health data through this medium. In deciding on an appropriate medium to educate nurses about managing patients with bipolar disorder, our group decided to use a YouTube video. YouTube is the leader in online video and the premier destination to watch and share videos worldwide through the web. Understanding bipolar disorder is important because it is a major health concern that affects 3 to 7 percent of the population in the United States. It can cause lifelong social and occupational impairment, and there is an overall poor prognosis for patients with bipolar disorder. Very few healthcare professionals are well educate, educated on bipolar disorder. They are not trained in caring and managing patients suffering from bipolar disorder. This lack of understanding and knowledge of bipolar disorders among healthcare professionals leads to worse outcomes for these patients. Adequate education and training will improve the quality of care and improve patient outcomes. Bipolar disorder is a chronic mental illness. It involves recurrent alternating episodes of mania and depression. It can cause severe impairment, including difficulty functioning in relationships, difficulty at work or holding a steady job, which is also associated with a poorer prognosis, and difficulty in school. The exact cause of bipolar disorder is unknown, but there are a variety of factors that may play a role. These include genetics, biochemistry, neurophysiology, and environmental factors. Women are at a higher risk than men for developing bipolar disorder. It can also be related to stress, a lack of sleep, hypothyroidism, pregnancy can bring on bipolar disorder, as well as antidepressant use. The average age of onset is 21 years, and alcohol abuse and illicit drug use are also common causes of bipolar disorder. These are often associated with a poorer prognosis. Nursing interventions for caring with patients with bipolar disorder. There is no doubt that nursing staff is affected when they care for patients suffering from bipolar disorders. It can be difficult for nursing staff to interact and provide care for a patient with bipolar disorder. These patients can experience mania, depression, or a rapid cycling between the two, which can cause a poor attention span. It can lead to violent outbursts, irritability, delusions, self-neglect behaviors, such as poor nutritional intake or ignoring hygiene needs, and distrust of the nursing staff. Signs and symptoms of manic depressive stages of bipolar disorder. During the manic stage, a bipolar patient will be over, have, 
have an overly inflated feeling of self-esteem. They will be restless and get little to no sleep. They will be irritable, angry, and agitated. They may also have racing thoughts, disorganized thinking patterns, an elevated goal activity, such as taking on new ideas and starting new projects. They have a heightened sense of vision, smell, or hearing. In severe cases, they may be capable of physical assault and hostile and threatening behaviors. In the depressive stage, they have persistent feelings of anger, anxiety, guilt, hopelessness, and a disturbance in appetite and sleep. They have a decrease in interest in their hobbies or activities. They are indifferent to the world. They have a prolonged low mood. They may be irritable, have thoughts of suicide, and may also engage in self-neglect behaviors. Nurses need to understand bipolar disorder in order to educate patients with bipolar disorder. First, patients need to be provided with a comprehensive education on bipolar disorder, but it should be divided into segments to avoid overwhelming the patient and be tailored to their individual needs. Second, Patients with bipolar disorder often have issues with medication compliance. Therefore, nurses must be able to build a trusting relationship. Lastly, nurses can educate the patient on the importance of medication regimen and monitor for signs of self-destructive behaviors or self-harm. Therapeutic interventions can help manage behaviors of patients with bipolar disorder. Staff needs to be trained and skilled in de-escalation and limit setting techniques. So nurses must know themselves, the patient, the situation, and how to communicate therapeutically. They must be trained in how to maintain personal control, utilize verbal and nonverbal communication, and engage the patient and use strategies for de-escalation. De-escalation techniques. De-escalation techniques can help avoid the need for physical or chemical restraints. Some examples include empathetic listening, such as the use of open-ended questions, being supportive and non-judgmental. You must intervene calmly. Use a calm, gentle, and soft tone of voice when communicating with patients. This will help them feel they're safe. You need to create an appearance of being calm when faced with aggression. The patient will then feel less threatened. You need to give them space. Do not enter their personal space and maintain a safe distance while communicating. Make sure that there is an exit for yourself if things escalate. Be receptive and helpful. Your body language should express concern for the patient. Active listening should be used to let the patient know that they are being listened to and understood. You must engage with the patient. Establish a bond with the patient that is displaying aggression in order to remove the need for aggression. You need to know when to intervene. Assess the situation carefully and decide the best time to intervene. Early intervention is vital in successful de-escalation. Creating a safe environment will also help. Assess the area for potential we weapons and exits for staff to leave the area safely. The patient should be encouraged to move to a quiet area separate from other patients and any uninvolved staff. Patients with bipolar disorder also need structure. You can provide structure by imposing and maintaining rules and limits appropriate for the patient's current mood and condition. Providing structure enhances a sense of security for the patient. It improves the nurse-client relationship and helps the patient feel that they are recovering. Bipolar disorder is a complex disease. It requires comprehensive understanding from the nurse in order to optimize patient outcomes. The adverse consequences of prejudice and discrimination towards people with mental health problems are well documented. Internalized stigma is associated with low self-esteem, poor treatment adherence, and increased symptom severity. Internalized stigma refers to the negative self-perceptions that people with mental illness hold. As nurses, we must work to remove these stigmas. Public stigma refers to the attitudes of the general population, including professional groups towards mental illness. We also must work to make sure that we do not hold any of these 
attitudes, and beliefs that will interfere with our care. With this group YouTube pres video with this group YouTube video presentation, we hope that nurses become more informed about how to care for a patient with bipolar disorder. We hope to empower nurses to effectively manage the complex care required for bipolar patients, even during acute illness. Do a self test. Now, the following slides will contain a question. Answer it for yourself, and then we will go over the answer with you. Question one, true or false? The first thing to do when faced with an aggressive patient is to get a group of staff members to hold down the patient while you administer Haldol. False. The first step when faced with an aggressive patient is to try and de-escalate the situation by using therapeutic communication. True or false? Patients with bipolar disorder do not need structure. False. Providing structure for your patient enhances their sense of security and improves the nurse-client relationship. Bipolar disorder is a chronic mental illness involving recurrent episodes of blank and blank. It is a chronic mental illness involving recurrent episodes of depression and mania. List some risk factors for developing bipolar disorder. Some include high levels of stress, a lack of sleep, hypothyroidism, pregnancy, antidepressant use. Thank you for viewing this presentation.